How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Joe Biden's administration appointing Rachel Levine as the assistant health secretary in the cabinet. Now, the big dog, her superior, would be Javier Becerra, and that's the health and human services secretary. He was their attorney general in California recently after Kamala Harris was in there. OK, he took a lot of her same uh, viewpoints and policies and whatnot and just amped them up a lot. Basically, he is Kamala Harris on cocaine, heroin, whatever you have over there in California, whatever the degenerate drug of choice is in comedy for you. But I digress. The whole point is that they're going to be the terrible twosome in that particular position. Um, I'm going to speak less about Javier Becerra. He's a bad person. But this individual here, Rachel Levine. Oh, there's plenty of material there. There's a treasure trove of material here. Um Let's not be distracted by the fact that this person looks like Danny DeVito as the Penguin in Batman Returns in 1992 or Miss Doubtfire or Beetlejuice. Let's forget about all of that right there and focus on why this person was nominated and why they're a bad pick. Aside from how they look and just physical characteristics. Now, I think this person was picked because first thing they have experience, right? They were the Pennsylvania health secretary. So they got experience and they're well known, all this, that and the third. But I think beyond the experience, because uh, Rachel is not the only experienced person in the United States to come in and be able to fill a cabinet position far from it. I think one of the bigger reasons why the person was selected was because of identity politics. All right. They will be the first transgender federal official that is confirmed by the senate you know i was kind of struggling with that because i had to read it a few times on a news report that was actual news report that said they'll be the first trans federal i had to read it a few times to be able to digest it and remember it to give it to you and if you don't believe me i'll place that on the screen and also in the description box below so you can see it and read it for yourself identity politics because they're transgender and pretty clearly so, pretty identifiable. You know, I'm not really being fooled by Miss Doubtfire. This ain't Blair White where I'm like, well, maybe it might be. You see what's going on. It's pretty identifiable because the Biden administration, they want you to know that they're very diverse. There was another pick like this, not a trans person, but this person was um, like native. So it was like, OK, you're the first native female appointed to this particular position and your particular age and you might be disabled uh there was a comedian that's going to perform at the inauguration or you know the virtual inauguration maybe she already did perform not really sure but i saw a short clip and in the clip as they begin to get into the jokes they start stuttering real bad now i may stammer occasionally in the video but i'm not going to be unable to get words out they were unable to get the jokes out at all and then they introduced themselves as the first or the only stuttering female comedian in San Francisco. It's like, all right, you got all these little titles. Oh, and she's also disabled, has dyslexia too. So you're dyslexic, you're stuttering, you're a woman, you're in California, you're a comedian. You got all these things that sets you apart from the rest. It's like playing Identity Olympics. First, it was you're going to be the first black this, the first black that. Then it became, oh, I'm the first woman this, first woman that. Then it became a matter of playing tic-tac-toe, chess, whatever. You know, Yahtzee, Mahjong. Oh, I'm the first black female woman, LGBT, with a club foot and a bad eye and a humpback. And I'm eight feet tall and I could fly. I got wings on my back that sprout when I get angry. That kind of thing is going on right now in the federal government with Joe Biden's administration. It's identity politics. You're trying to play to that particular crowd that likes that kind of stuff. Oh, not diverse enough, Joe. Get more diverse. Well, I got something for you. Bam. Transgender, um, you know, Beetlejuice, half deceased. You know, I got all of that right here in the bag. And they smart 500 IQ. What you going to do with that? That's the kind of game we playing right now. But I digress. This person, Rachel, is not a good pick. Regardless of the identity and how they look, they're not a good pick. Because... Let's go back to the time in Pennsylvania. I mean, we're not going back too far. We're going back to 2020, last year, during this pandemic. I mean, pandemic. I mean, pandemic. She had a policy that readmitted, quote unquote, stable virus patients into nursing homes. Right. So 
if you're 85 years old, you got the virus, but you're stable, you're not really good, falling over, you were allowed to be admitted back. It was a policy for them to be admitted back into the nursing home. And of course, that caused a lot of problems, a lot of deaths in nursing homes where that went on. Same thing in New York City, especially. All right. What was the policy? Put them in a nursing home. And as a result, you had thousands of people that died in New York City. I'm not sure how many died in Pennsylvania, probably at least a thousand, but maybe I'm wrong. If you guys know the exact number, let me know in the comments below. Regardless of what the actual number is, it was wrong for this person to do that. And then beyond that, it's not like, oh, it was an accident. It was a mistake because they took their mom out of the nursing home that they were in before they put virus patients into other nursing homes. Now, I'm not really sure if the virus patients were put into that particular nursing home that the mother was in, but it doesn't even matter because you knew what the risks of having virus patients in the nursing home would be. You took your mom out. Your mom did not have the virus. Your mom probably wasn't even in danger. We took her out regardless because you didn't want to risk the danger of somebody with the virus coming into that closed space with sick people, making your mom catch the virus and die. So it's all right for you to take your mom out, but you're going to expose other people's moms and their dads and their aunts, uncles, loved ones or whatever to the virus. OK, so if you're going to be the health secretary or the assistant health secretary, you might have a better track record than that. You might want to have a better track record of, you know, treating people and doing the right thing. And Javier Becerra, I'm not really sure why he's there as the boss of Rachel as the health and human services secretary. I'm not really sure why he's there because he was the attorney general. And then before that, he was like a local rep in Los Angeles representing downtown. Might have been Skid Row, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what makes him, you know, suitable for that role. Maybe identity as well. Okay, you come probably from immigrants or on the left coast, California might be bilingual, trilingual, whatever. You're Hispanic, obviously, so you kind of fit that role. What I'm seeing right now in the administration is identity above skill. I don't care what color you are. I don't care. Matter of fact, you could be transgender. You could look like Rosie O'Donnell meets uh, John Cena meets Booker T meets George Washington. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you identify as. You can identify as a hot boiling pot of water. It's irrelevant. Can you get the job done? That's my objective. All right. Do you perform quality work? Do you do quality work? Do you get your job done or do you not get the job done? All right. That's it. When I'm going on Amazon, I don't really care too much about, you know, a brand name or a company. If it does not denote quality. I'm going to go on there. I'm going to look at how many stars a thing has, what the price is, and I'm going to judge my payment based on that. Okay, I'm going to buy it based on that. Is it quality? The price is right. That's all that really matters. I don't really care who's boxing it, who's sending it, where it really comes from. Is it going to be good stuff? That's it. That's all that really matters. Is it American made? I'm going to have certain little things I'm looking at when I go into buying that particular product. The look of someone that's packaging it or delivering it to me is really irrelevant. Now, if they're able to deliver sound policy that's helpful for the whole United States, then more power to them. Identify as whatever you want. Matter of fact, if you like, you know, playing makeup and all this and that makes you feel better and you do a better job while you at it, then go for it. Matter of fact, I'll, you know, I'll tell you to go to the Goodwill and pick up some good grandma dresses and wigs. You feel like a million dollars, right? But that ain't the case. This person has a deadly track record, allegedly, from what I was seeing in Pennsylvania. I did a video about them, what, a, a year or so ago? They are not a good pick, regardless of what. They could look like Melania Trump. It's irrelevant. Are you a good pick or not? I think what's happening here as I close is that the left are putting their identity and all that kind of stuff above actual talent, above actual performance. This is a big part of the reason why they are losing favor among some people. Now, among some, they're gaining favor. Maybe among the young or the brainwashed don't know any better. They don't really know. All they know is Orange Man bad, and that's it. They don't know anything about um, Joe Biden or the administration or people like, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, um, Rachel, quote-unquote, Rachel Levine. I wonder what their actual birth biological name was. No, it was not Rachel. I wonder what it was. Is it like twins where they named themselves or their names similarly but gender specific, you understand? Like, uh, I guess a good one would be Anthony and Antonia, Rick or Raquel. Oh, one last thing here. 
people are criticizing Rachel because of the whole thing that happened in Pennsylvania with the nursing homes and some more stuff that they have been involved with has not really turned out too well. And then the the reaction is, oh, you're being transphobic. You're attacking me because I'm transgender. All right. She accused one person of misgendering them. I think it was my man, Marty. Shout out to my man, Marty from KDK Aver in Pittsburgh. He, quote unquote, misgendered her by calling her sir. Now, I'm sure that Marty is like kind of a liberal guy. Didn't even mean to do it. He probably seen this person as their former self, probably named Rick and just made a mistake. You know, oh, you're misgendering me. That seems to be the shield rather than being caught up in this, you know, misgender and all this and that. How about perform well at your job? That's really it. That's all they'll be asked. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that Rachel, quote unquote Rachel, will be a great pick for the federal government in their position as the assistant health secretary? If that's your viewpoint, let me know why in the comments below. Or would they not be a good pick? If that's your viewpoint, let me know why in the comments below. You know where I stand. I don't care that they look like Michael Keaton plus about 80 pounds and a Beetlejuice reboot. I don't really care about any of that all right that's really irrelevant to me my whole thing is are they gonna do a good job or not and the bigger issue is the track record they already got which is not very good that's the main thing we should focus more on people's performance and their ability to have positive results more than anything else more than what the media puts on us to focus on oh she's transgender we just got a celebrator celebrator for what doing a bad job resulting in deaths allegedly in Pennsylvania doesn't make any sense to me but whatever your thoughts are please let me know in the comments below and that's all I gotta say for this video if you like what you heard please comment rate share and subscribe peace